The Way of Water took place years after the events of the first Avatar, and it showed the Sky People returning to start a new colony. But even though the sequel showed a lot of trouble with the RDA, it skipped over one of the biggest battles between the Navi and the RDA. So today, we're going to talk about why Avatar 2 skipped one of its biggest showdowns, and discuss the possibility of Quaritch getting a redemption arc. Starting off with Cameron's original plan for the sequel. Well, instead of focusing on their forced settlement and how it affected the Navi, we think the sequel moved quickly to their already set up camps. But James Cameron's original plan for the much anticipated second part didn't really include this sudden return. At first, the story for the Avatar sequel was going to be very different and focus on battles. And it didn't fit with what James Cameron had in mind for the sequels to Avatar, so it was turned into a three volume comic book series called Avatar The High Ground. The prequel comic series not only filled in more of the time between the first and second Avatar movies, but also led to one of the most epic battles between the Navi and their space colonizers. The Way of Water, on the other hand, didn't have Cameron's big battle idea. Maybe we'll see that in the later sequels. Next up, what we know about James Cameron's scrapped Avatar 2. Cameron's first idea for a screenplay for Avatar 2 was fully developed, as he and his team of writers worked on a 130-page follow-up that was brilliantly executed how J.Cam prefers. The premise was set up 10 years after the first movie, where Jake and Natiri were raising their children in a free Pandora. Jake also trained the Navi to fight against the Sky People when the heavily armed RDA returned and hoped to get rid of them for good. But when things didn't go as planned, and the Navi didn't win the battle in space, Jake and Natiri fought to protect their children, home, and people. Even though it gave important details about things like the Navi's migration, Cameron thought it lacked one of the most important parts of sequels and didn't go far enough into the unexpected. And we wholeheartedly trust his judgment. As for Sam Worthington, who plays the main character Jake Sully, said that while the script filled in the missing gap between the movies, Cameron wanted it to be more about family than about being heroes, which it was. So instead of continuing with that story, Cameron took parts of it and put them into the current storyline of the saga. And unfortunately, that meant leaving out the huge battle in the middle, followed by why the High Grounds Navis versus RDA battle is so important. In the same way that Avatar did, Avatar the High Ground showed that the Navi clans work together and are stronger when together. Even though the second movie showed that community is important, the focus clearly moved from the larger group to the Sully family, and this took away from the colonial story and put the focus on family-themed messages instead. On the same note, the final battle between the RDA and the Navi has many of the same themes as the first movie, showing the terrible impact of the RDA's forced settlement. This battle was much bigger than the one in Avatar The Way of Water. The stakes were higher, and Cameron went on and on about how the Navi fought with bows and arrows in zero gravity. But the unseen battle between the Navi and the RDA, which took place in different places, and ended in a devastating loss, set up the feelings, scale, and direction of the rest of the series. We can't help but imagine how the battle would have looked on the big screen. But even though the defining battle didn't happen on screen, it's still possible to experience it through the Avatar The High Ground series. Make sure you check it out. Moving on to how Avatar 2 sets up a redemption story for Colonel Quaritch. In The Way of Water, we think Colonel Quaritch has the perfect chance to make things right. We all know that the Colonel was the face of the RDA and the main bad guy in Avatar. Natiri killed him, but he returned as a recombinant soldier with a new Avatar body in the sequel. In the first Avatar, Quaritch was portrayed by Stephen Lang as an unmovable and emotionless enemy of Jake Sully and the Navi. But Cameron's second movie in the Avatar series made a lot of small changes to the character, which could be good news for his future in the upcoming sequels. We saw The Way of Water featuring a version of Quaritch that's very different from the person he used to be, and this is mainly because his old self died, which changed him a lot, and also because some big secrets were revealed during the movie. We were also introduced to Miles' spider Sakoro, who was left on Pandora when the humans left at the end of Avatar and grew up with Jake and Natiri's kids in the forests of Pandora. Coming up, the introduction to a very different Quaritch. Quaritch was probably the character who changed the most since he first appeared in Avatar, and that wasn't just because he went from being a human to a recombinant Avatar. Previously, Quaritch didn't show much emotion in the first movie besides his obvious anger and hatred for Pandora's native Navi and Jake Sully's apparent betrayal. But the way of water made his emotions ten times more complex. Obviously, putting him in the body of his enemy was a great first step, as he started to enjoy being a Navi. 
savvy warrior, avatar, and started to follow some of their traditions, like making friends with an Ikran and learning their language. But ironically, Avatar The Way of Water gave viewers a much more human version of Quaritch than they saw in Avatar. What's more, Miles' spider Sekoro, the human friend of Jake and Natiri's kids, was revealed to be Quaritch's biological son when he first appeared. And as Spider and the new Quaritch spent time together, they started to form a bond that people would have thought was impossible for the version of Quaritch in Avatar. Well, we're not gonna lie, we thought that too. And we think this will definitely become important as the Avatar franchise grows with the release of all three Avatar sequels. Not to mention, Quaritch's quest to understand his enemy could be changing him. As soon as Quaritch woke up in his new Avatar body, he and his team of recombinant soldiers went to work on their mission of revenge against Jake Sully, who had destroyed their operation in Avatar. This journey takes him deep into the forests of Pandora, where he finds not only his son Spider, but also the place where he died. And this is the turning point in his new life, as Quaritch crushing his human skull shows that he has an existential moment. By giving up his old life and deciding that the best way to find his enemy is to understand them, he starts living like a Navi. And to support his Navi lifestyle, Spider teaches his father some Navi words and tells him what to eat, how to act around other Navi, and how to get close to his own Ikrin the real way. We think it would be safe to assume that these events very much shape Quaritch's new path in the Avatar franchise, since his efforts to understand his enemy are making him more similar to them. And as he sees Pandora for the first time with fresh eyes, similar to how Jake Sully did in Avatar, it means that he's learning to appreciate Pandora and all it has to offer, not just the valuable materials that humans consume. Now, let's not forget how he exposed himself to the Ewa network. The ideology of Ewa, the global network on Pandora that represents the Navi's spirituality and their connection to their ancestors, is undoubtedly at the heart of James Cameron's message in the Avatar franchise. It goes without saying that Ewa is a very important character in Avatar, as she helped Jake win the final battle and move his consciousness into his Avatar body for good. And the Way of Water emphasizes her importance even more as Kiri, Grace Augustine's daughter, has a strong bond with Ewa. This will only become more important as the series continues, and Quaritch also hints at it. But during the movie, Quaritch exposes himself to the Ewa network more than once, perhaps without realizing it. He does this most often when he bonds with his Ikran, and this process must be making his brain grow, which might make him more open to Ewa and help him see how beautiful Pandora is and how important the Navi's connection to nature is, something that he didn't see at all in Avatar. And through the Navi bonding technique, Pandora could be changing Quaritch from the inside out, making him more Navi and less human with each film, ironically making him more human. Last but not least, is Avatar setting up a redemption story for Quaritch? Well, Stephen Lang has been confirmed to be in all three of the upcoming Avatar sequels, so it might make some sense for him to go on a journey of redemption. And especially now that he knows his son is alive and well, and has started to integrate himself into Navi culture fully. On top of that, Jake's story in Avatar followed the same path. At first, he was a soldier who wanted to join the Navi and destroy their home. But later, he changed and became a man who was willing to give up his old life and fight to protect the Navi and Pandora. And according to James Cameron, the sequels to Avatar will have new clans and different places, so it's possible that Quaritch could fit in with any of the Navi clans. The character had almost non-existent layers in the first movie, so the future looks good for this new version of the villain. And it would be interesting to see a powerful enemy do what Jake did and turn his back on humanity, fully embracing life with the Navi and maybe even embracing Spider completely. That's all for this video. Do you think Quaritch will redeem himself in the next installments of Avatar? Let us know in the comments below. Remember to like this video and subscribe to our channel for more exciting content in the future. Thanks for watching. See you next time.